Hello everyone, I am Fani from Google Cloud's APG. Welcome to the Edge Runtime Errors module of the APG Troubleshooting Series. In this video, I will introduce you to the 503 service unavailable error and its possible causes which are specific to APG Edge. I will also show you how to troubleshoot and resolve a 503 service unavailable error written by a backend service in APG Edge. To follow along with the information in this video, you should have an APG Edge account. If you haven't watched the video on Introduction to Runtime Errors in the APG Edge Runtime Errors module of the APG Troubleshooting series, I suggest you to check them out using the link provided in the description. So what is 503 Service Unavailable Error? 503 Service Unavailable Error means the backend service is unable to handle the client requests. This generally occurs either if the backend service is too busy to handle the request, down as part of a scheduled maintenance, or there are some network related issues between APG and the backend service. In APG Edge, this error can be seen typically at the outgoing or southbound connection, that is, during the communication between APG Edge's message processor and the backend service. Here are some of the typical causes that lead to 503 service unavailable errors in APG Edge. The 503 errors can occur when the backend server is overloaded or too busy that it cannot accept any new requests or is down due to maintenance. These errors can also occur when APG Edge's message processors are unable to establish a connection with the backend service. This could be due to DNS resolution issues, network connectivity issues, or due to unexpected network failures. In addition, failures during the TLS handshake process between APG Edge and the backend service can also lead to 503 errors. To begin with, I'll show you some sample error messages that come along with a 503 service unavailable error in APG Edge. The first example here shows a backend service responding with a 503 service unavailable error. The key points to note in this example are the reason field, which is indicating that the backend service is under maintenance. So, in this case, the cause of the 503 error is the backend service itself. Beware that the format and the content of the error message can vary and are completely dependent on implementation of the backend service. And there could be scenarios where backend servers may just set the error response code as 503 without any response message. Also keep in mind, whenever a backend service responds with a 503 error, APG Edge returns the error and the response message as is to the clients. In addition, APG Edge sets the error or fault code as messaging.adapters.http.flow.error response code and stores this information in analytics as well. Here is another example of 503 service unavailable error. This error message is typically observed when APG Edge fails to establish network connection with the backend service. If the network connection cannot be established with the backend service within the configured connection timeout period, then a 503 error is returned by the APG Edge itself. The default value of the connection timeout period is 3 seconds in APG Edge. Notice that APG sets the error or fault code as messaging.adapters.http.flow.service unavailable in this case. When there are TLS handshake failures between APG Edge and the backend service, a 503 error with error or fault code as messaging.adapters.http.flow.ssl handshake failed is returned to the client. Sometimes you might also see a 503 error with the error or fault code as messaging.adapters.http.flow.noactive targets. This particular error code can be observed when an API proxy uses target server instead of using direct URL in the target endpoint configuration and there are no healthy target servers available to serve the request. This happens if the number of failures from each of the target servers has exceeded the max failure count configured. This error and its causes will be discussed in more detail in the subsequent videos. Alright, I just walked you through some sample 503 error messages and the corresponding error codes. I will now introduce you to some of the techniques that can be used to troubleshoot 503 errors in APG Edge. APG Edge provides powerful debugging utilities like API monitoring, UI trace, and the component diagnostic logs which can be used for troubleshooting the runtime errors. To begin with, the API monitoring has some key features that enable you to diagnose errors, performance and latency issues for live API requests, 
or the API requests that failed in the past and determine the source of these issues such as API proxies, backend targets, developer apps, or the platform. It leverages the fault codes which help you in fast diagnosis of issues, thereby reduce the mean time to diagnose issues and increase API availability. UI Trace is another powerful utility. It allows you to trace the live incoming API requests and capture the details about each step during the API proxy flow. So, it helps you to troubleshoot and monitor the live API requests running through APG Edge. In addition, APG Edge has diagnostic logs for each of its components which can be used to perform deeper investigation about various issues or errors. Remember, API monitoring is available only for public cloud users and the APG Edge component diagnostic logs are accessible only for private cloud users. I will now do a demo on how to troubleshoot a live 503 error using various diagnostic utilities explained earlier. Here is an API proxy demo API which is configured to a particular backend service demo-target.abg.net. Notice that in this case a direct URL is used to communicate with the backend service. I will make some requests to this API proxy now. Oops, the API proxy is responding with 503 errors. Hmm, how do we troubleshoot this issue? First, check the investigate dashboard in the API monitoring to find more details about these failures. See here, all these API calls have failed with 503 errors. First up is to find the fault code of these errors. The fault code is showing up as messaging.adapters.http.flow.errorresponse code. If you recollect from the previous discussion on the sample error codes, the fault code is set as error response code only if the backend server itself sends a 503 error. Next step is find out the fault source. There you go, API monitoring confirms that the fault source of these errors is indeed the target. API monitoring also gives the information about which backend server is throwing these errors. To find this information, scroll down to the right hand bottom corner of the dashboard. Hmm. The 503 errors are all tagged against the backend server demo-target.apg.net. This indicates that there must be some issues with the backend service due to which it is responding with 503 errors. Thus, with the help of API monitoring, we have been able to determine the fault code, the fault source, and the backend service that is causing the 503 errors. Remember, the API monitoring dashboard is available only for APG public cloud users. I will now use the UI trace to troubleshoot the same issue. Unlike API monitoring, the UI trace can be used by both public and private cloud users. Navigate to the trace tab and start the UI trace session on the API proxy. Now make some API requests from the UI itself. As expected, all the API requests are failing with 503 errors. Select one of the failing requests and examine the details. As you navigate through the different phases, you can notice that the request is sent to the backend service successfully and there are no errors until that point. Now check the response from the backend service. Ah, the backend service has responded back with 503 errors. This concurs with what is observed in the API monitoring dashboard. You can repeat this by examining a few more requests in the trace to confirm that all the 503 errors are indeed coming from the backend. end. 
One key advantage of UI trace is that you can get the information such as response headers on the response content of the backend service, which will be pretty useful to troubleshoot these kind of issues. Check the response returned by the backend service. There you go. There is a response from the backend service which says, service is temporarily down for maintenance, visit after some time. Thus, it's very clear now that the cause of 503 errors is backend service which is down for maintenance. The UI trace also gives you other information such as the final response that goes to the client. In this case, APG Edge sends the error response message received from the backend server as is to the client. The UI trace also provides analytics information logged for the API request. Here you can find the fault or error code of the request. In this case, it is messaging.adapters.http.flow.errorresponse code. The fault source is the target. This is because the error response came from the backend service itself. To resolve this issue, you can either bring the backend service into the working state from the maintenance mode or retry this APAs later when the backend service is available for APA calls. In this demo, the backend service is owned by us, so I will bring it back online from the maintenance mode. Now the backend service is online. I'll make the APA calls again. There you go, the APA proxy is returning successful responses. Remember, if the backend service is owned by a different team, then you need to work with them to bring it back online or fix any issue with the backend service. Let me do a quick recap. We use the API monitoring dashboard and UI trace and determine the cause of the 503 errors to be the backend service. The UI trace further helped us to find out that the backend service was actually down for maintenance. Finally, we resolve the issue by bringing the backend service online from the maintenance mode. In this video, you learned about 503 service unavailable error and its possible causes in the APG Edge, sample 503 service unavailable errors and the corresponding fault codes, how to troubleshoot and resolve a 503 error from the backend service. Check out the video description for more information on 503 service unavailable errors and relevant troubleshooting playbooks for your easy reference. And if you would like to know more about other possible causes of 503 service unavailable errors, please watch the other videos in this module and subscribe to our channel if you would like to get notified on future videos. Thanks and see you in the next video.